All right, that was that was one of my top fifteen fade outs of Build Me a Buttercup. Uh, the time I spend at twenty thousand feet in the air on my G seven hundred with David Guetta and Skrillex above Ibiza have is finally paying off. Uh, I'm Scary Alvarez, King of the Wisconsin Badger Twitter, Wine Island Enjoyer, Cherry Wine Destroyer, Jake's Grandpa, and Cindy's Plus One When She'll Have Me. And I am very excited uh, to welcome the Chief Congressional Reporter for CNN, and more importantly, former Wisconsin football student season ticket holder, who <laughs> I am told got into Camp Randall on time for games, Amana Raju. <laughs> welcome aboard. Well, thanks for having me. That's not always true, but a Oftentimes, I was on time, but not always. There's there's always pregame festivities, as you know. Yeah, we can get into that. We can get into specifics on that. Uh, but this must be the the thrill of a lifetime for you. Um, I know it's a super calm day in Washington there in Congress, so nothing going on. So I, I do appreciate you joining me in the doldrums of your day. You got it. Anytime. When the dawn cool. calls and asks you to do something, you listen. You pick up. Absolutely. Um, so, Monica, for, for the few people, my millions of listeners who don't know, uh, you know, real quick, just give us some insight in what you do for a living and what your connections to Wisconsin are. We'll, of course, explore both of these in great detail. Sure, yes. I uh, am a CNN's chief congressional correspondent covering Capitol Hill and all the fun and excitement that happens up here every single day, all the power players, the leadership, the major issues. That are all moving through here, so things can get busy. I also have a Sunday morning political show called Inside Politics Sunday with Manu Raju, 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 Central, for those who may be interested, where I report on the latest news, bring in new reporting, interview newsmakers, and have panelists and reporters uh, breaking it all down. So that is my current life. <clears throat> my past life was Yes, indeed, a Wisconsin Badger. I was I graduated from the University of Wisconsin in '02. I was a uh, re reporter and then sports editor of the Badger Herald back in some of the glory years that you, of course, coach, remember quite clearly. '98 to 2002, two Rose Bowls. I was at the '99 Rose Bowl against UCLA, one of the greatest games uh, that I've ever been to. Uh, uh, of course, we had a Heisman Trophy winner, Ron Dane, Final Four, that 2000 team. Uh, it was just a great, great period uh, for Wisconsin sports. So I'm, I'm a rabid fan. I tune into everything. I go back to Madison at least once, oftentimes twice a year these days. Uh, so, yes, when the, again, when the coach asks you to do something, you listen. Well, I appreciate it. And yeah, I remember you at those games in 98-99. Uh, and uh, thanks for sticking with us through the shoebox scandal of, of 2001. I know that was your, <laughs> your junior and senior year. Uh, some people might have jumped ship there. That You know, I, I will say that, you know, occasionally I go into Wikipedia and I delete the line for 2001 that says five and seven because it just doesn't yeah. seem like it was real. But yeah, but, right. uh, they keep, yeah, they keep so, some guy like Harbaugh Lover 69 uh, keeps adding it back in. For some reason, I'm not sure who Can that I is. just say about the about the shoebox scandal? That was the most that was the most made up scandal in sports history, perhaps. It was so absurd, just for some discounts on shoes. And this is why, okay? Because after that happened, I went down to Black Earth, Wisconsin, to see what was going on. I think I was either I think I was doing actually writing something for uh, a school project. And I went and I talked to the guy after the scandal, the, the owner of the shop, and he gave me a pair of discounted shoes. He gave everybody a pair of discounted shoes. This was not a special favor. And then all yeah. of a sudden we have all these players suspended right before, uh, I think it was what, the first game of the season? I went, Right, wasn't it, if I recall correctly? Yeah. And then we, we, were, we were in the top five in the country and we were screwed because of that. That, that was an infuriating made up scandal. We are of like mind. Uh, as, as some some in that town you live in say fake news, but uh, you know, look, here's here's the deal with that. The mistake with the shoebox scandal was having a loosely affiliated booster giving the same discounts to players as he would give to uh, non-players instead of just giving ten thousand dollars in cash and envelope like LSU and Alabama. <laughs> it was a it was yeah, a good lesson to learn, right? Yet yeah, they seem to get away with it, so you know. Yeah, yeah. Don't I guess don't don't have a have a coupon and don't have a a uh, credit card receipt. That that seems to be. But with NIL now, though. By the way, before we get going here, 
just saw something breaking over the news that that right now Paul Christ is a a candidate for the Ohio State offensive coordinator position. And let me tell you something. Wow. As a Wisconsin fan, I 100 percent endorse that that move. That would be <laughs> that would be a wonderful move. I love Paul uh, and and his his uh, his offenses, and we know them well. And I just think that would be great. I hope they uh, get similar quarterback recruits. So that would be good. absolutely, absolutely. Get, get maybe Tulzine's getting up there. Maybe his kids, his kids coming up to the ranks now. <laughs> um, yes, indeed. <laughs> Do you ever get sick of the stressful universe of politics and decide you want to do something calming, like covering a tight Big Ten basketball game between Wisconsin and <laughs> Purdue, or, or, or doing a deep dive on planet-killing bioweapons that could wipe out the human race in three weeks? I tell you, it's more stressful to be a sports reporter, and especially when you're a fan of that team. That's uh, that is difficult. Um, you know, I actually was, you know, as I mentioned. I started, you know, when I was a baby reporter uh, covering sports and, you know, I, I had, I struggled with uh, being a fan and doing it as a job. I actually think it, think it was kind of complicated because you want to, you know, be all in and focus on your team and root for them and not have to like, you know, think about it and work out and do it as a job, as a career. So I kind of felt like I needed to separate the two because sports is my escape, you know, my passion and then work is work. Right. So that's uh you know, but when, especially if you watch a game like yesterday or even worse, the Nebraska game. I mean, how do you how do you stay unbiased in that situation? It was a very difficult weekend uh, to be a Wisconsin Badger basketball fan or the child of a Big Ten official. I just feel like <laughs> you see seeing your dad out there and just just having what you want to have is a sense of pride and then just seeing what they're doing and, it, it, you know, building a uh, building a wall around uh, Zach Eady. And his elbows. I just, I, I you know, honestly, getting into, I, I try not to complain about the officiating in the Purdue game because it was actually equally horrible for both teams until about the last two minutes. And then yeah, I mean, it, that, it, that 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 last minute. I mean, there were two turnovers. I mean, there were two legitimate turnovers that they missed. They blew the calls. And you're right. I mean, does Zach Nee Edie need any more help from the officiating than he? being an absolute tree and a giant who's do who, who towers over everybody and he gets officiating help too. I mean, I mean, it's, us it's, not unbelievable. Hitting three, it's unbelievable. Us not hitting threes and not getting the rebound didn't rebounds didn't help, but still, I mean, that didn't, that hurt us badly. Yeah. I, I, I feel like the, the three point percentage for Wisconsin was about as low as my head coach percentage when uh, Bill, Bill McGarry Henderson, around that time in the 20 mid 2010s uh, but but you know it is what it is and you know officials made the decision that you are going to protect Zach Eady's elbows from noses at all cost and here we are so you might have heard that Luke Fickle is uh was hired as a new Wisconsin football coach just over a year ago uh, are you as excited as I am to see if you can become Wisconsin's second best football coach of all time <laughs> I am. And I I tell you, I mean, obviously this was a very disappointing uh, season. Um, I feel like, you know, I think when Chaz Malusi went down, that really set us back. You know, I, I, I think Braylon is a great running back, but I don't, you know, I'm skeptical about his, him as an NFL running back. I think that he really benefited with Chaz Malusi in the backfield. And when he went down that hurt and obviously Tanner Mordecai too, but they were just, even at the first the beginning of the season, they were just shaky when we were full strength too. They never really quite gelled, you know, as an offensive unit, which way they should have, especially, I think Mordecai is a really good quarterback. I think he was a, he's a really good quarterback. He just, you know, towards the end of the season, he looked really sharp. He looked sharper in the bowl game, uh, but it just combination of those injuries and not quite gelling at the beginning was a very disappointing for all of us, but I do have faith. I think that he is a smart quarterback. I think the players trust him. I think I'm happy with some of the, um, re, you know, tra- recruits and transfers uh, who are coming in. Um, and we'll see how this Miami quarterback does for us next year. So I, I think the future is bright, actually. Do you? I think it is, too. I think it is, too. You know, and, and there's always this unfortunate – it's all a relative thing, right? So if Fickle and the headwinds he has with recruiting and <clears throat> the transfer portal and things like that – if he had been the, become the Wisconsin coach in 2016 or 2017, like like Paul Christ did, and this is no this is no, you know, diss on Christ, who's a, who's a really solid coach and a great guy, very well liked by his players. But 
the headwinds that Fickle faces right now with the new 18 team Big Ten and the new scheduling and the, and the lack of a Big Ten West, it, it, he's going to have to be significantly better than, than Chris had to be. And those teams are going to have to be significantly more talented than Chris' teams, which is saying yeah. a lot because there's a lot of NFL talent on those teams. Uh, it kind of fell off towards the end, but just just to keep your head above water. So an eight and four season, for example, the new Big Ten would be the equivalent, in my opinion, of of a twelve and one season in twenty sixteen. Does that sound fair? Yeah, I think that's probably fair. And I, look, I, I mean, we didn't do ourselves any favors by you know losing to Indiana, losing to Northwestern. I mean, those are games you should absolutely never lose. You know, I mean, um, but. Yeah, I mean, I totally agree that, like, I think that they they need to up their recruiting game. I think that it was the wise decision to get rid of Chris. I thought, you're right, I met Chris before. I think he's, he's a super nice guy. He's a Wisconsinite. Players love him. But, you know, he didn't – they didn't quite have the recruiting pipeline that Fickle has built. And I think that yeah. the court, from the quarterback position in particular, and I think that with the – you know, you look at some of the kids that are coming up through the as quarterback, I think we have a pretty good system to, you know, if um, – you know, for not just this year, next year as well. Um, someone, people who could be real strong, strong in the position. I mean, and, and I'm sure it's driven you crazy, coach. That we Wisconsin has such a good pipeline of running backs, but that just has not been the case for quarterbacks, and that just sets us back uh, so much. Uh, but if we can have those NFL caliber quarterbacks year in year out, uh, the, the program, and I think Fickle could do it. The program would go you know, through the roof if that happens. Yeah. I think we can agree. That. Agreed. And and the reality is, and this is, again, this is no disrespect to, to guys like Jack Cohn, but Wisconsin in the old days, and old days mean just like three, four, five years ago, you, you could be a program who could challenge for the college football playoff or a Big Ten title and, and not have an elite quarterback. Right now, it's very difficult to be one of those upper echelon teams without that kind of quarterback, for, for, for better or worse. I mean, if you look at the, the you know the teams who kind of the, the, the cream rose to the top last year, and, and I'm not a huge Michigan fan, you probably noticed. Uh, <laughs> that's an asterisk title, and I think they'll still be fallout from it. But they, they had a really good quarterback playing quarterback for them. They had a great defense. Right. Uh, Washington, obviously, with the Penix, by way of Indiana, another superstar. So those weren't those weren't – I don't know what their star rankings were. I'm sure. I'm sure the Michigan kid was was very high, and Penix may have not been a three because he started at IU. But you need a big time quarterback. So I, I'm not trying to put all this on Alex Van Dyke next year, but the recruiting, whether it's Matoyer or you know some of the kids lock, some of the kids already in the in the program, clearly there's an emphasis on on getting not only a system friendly quarterback, but the arm talent that maybe we haven't consistently had the things that we wanted Graham Mertz to be at Wisconsin that that never panned out. Yeah, and again, there's no reason for that not to happen. I mean, Wisconsin has some of the best facilities uh, in the country. I mean, I, I did a tour in uh, Camp Randall a couple of years ago uh, and went through all, you know, went to the, you know, into the stadium and around and, you know, Coach, you weren't there. I didn't see you at the time. But it was a um, – I, I was blown away just how top-notch the facilities are. Uh, and then you to add to that how great of a town Madison is, the fan base, this, you know, everything. There's no reason for us – not to have the best recruits year in, year out, uh, competing with Ohio State, uh, competing with Alabama. Uh, there's absolutely no excuse for that. And I, and I think Pickle is of the same mindset, which is refreshing. Yeah, I appreciate that. You just became an unpaid graduate uh, assistant for recruiting. So we're going to keep you on the, on the – I guess it's not the payroll yeah. since it's unpaid, but you're going to be kind yeah. of an emissary out there. Maybe you can yeah. work – at it. I know we've been working the Maryland – DC area a bit uh, with some of the the recent classes, so you can you can uh, be our ace in the hole there. Appreciate like that. that. And by the way, something, something I meant to ask you at, at the outset, um, and this is this is you know you're well aware of the shadow that I cast and my gravitas, but do you think I should run for president, or am I too <laughs> young at seventy six? Uh, yeah, and in, in this environment, you might be just a shade too young. So I, I'm not sure if that's the the right move for you, Barry, but Wisconsin is a swing state, and I think you could carry Wisconsin. I, pre I, I know I'd have Wisconsin. I think I might struggle, though, a little bit with Minnesota, Iowa, and <laughs> and uh, in Illinois. Speaking <laughs> of Illinois, I, I, my my unpaid grad assistant researcher Joe Ferguson uh, did a little bit of a deep dive on some of your 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 background, and I mm -hmm. I uh, 
heard that you were from the the Chicago area. Uh, yeah, um, that's right. Yeah, was it was it exciting for you when you got admitted to Wisconsin and moved to Madison to move to a state with an NFL team? <laughs> I was expecting something like that. Um, look, I I don't hide my allegiance to Chicago pro sports. I am a diehard Cubs fan, and yes, I'm unfortunately a Bears fan. Uh, and um, it was a difficult period of my life. Uh, from that regard, because not only are there unfortunately too many Packer fans at Wisconsin, uh, there are also unfortunately too many Vikings fans too. And when I was there, um, it was uh, the, the Vikings were very good. It was the um, uh, it, it was uh, Randy Moss era, so the Vikings had a very strong team, and you know the Bears are the Bears, and so they've not been good since '85, which is still the best NFL team of all time. Well, they they did. I will. I do think, though, looking through a twenty twenty four lens and the advances in video and and uh, talent and singing and dancing, that Super Bowl shuffle might get a different reception if, if people if people watch that now. I understand it's a it's a it's a time it's a time capsule of sorts. But you know, half of them are going one direction. Half of them are going. It's like if they would have played defense. The same way they did, they did music videos. The Packers might have had a chance to be within twenty of them that year. Because that was, the <laughs> I tell you, we had to learn that in grade school. That was a required uh, coursework in the Chicago land area. So, so you were in grade school the last time the Chicago Bears had a Super Bowl champion. Uh, how does that I feel? Think I was the, actually in kindergarten. I, you know, kindergarten. It was, uh, it, was, uh, it, was, it was it was unfortunate. Let me just let me, you know we we have eighty five. But you know what? You know, yeah, you have Jordan Love, yeah, whatever. But I feel, I you know, we, we'll see what we do with this number one draft pick. So, I, but yeah. but I should but I should I should back up. I should back up. We you know, I'll be honest with you. The McCaskies, uh, I don't do us any favors as the owners of this team. Uh, I love Papa Bear Hallis for everything that he did uh, for football and the franchise. But you know, his family has not done him any service by. Uh, great service by their by their stewardship of the Bears franchise. So I don't have much faith in the ownership of the team. Well, I'm going to appoint you as GM uh, for a day for the Bears, which actually is something that is that is a non-zero possibility of happening at some point. <laughs> you play your cards right. But yes. So in in the draft in April, yeah, of course, after the, the number one overall pick uh, from the Panthers, what do you, what do you do with that pick, Monty? It's a good question. I'm sort of torn about it. Um, Look, I think Justin Fields is a super talented quarterback. I think that he is such a great runner, the way he op runs in the open field. He can, you know, he's he does have a great arm. The challenge with him is that when he's under pressure, he makes a lot of bad decisions. So what do you do? Do you try to build up around him or do you get rid of him and then go with Caleb Williams for the number one pick? But rookie quarterbacks, I mean, the Bears don't have exactly the best track record of building good quarterbacks. So what if Caleb's terrible? And then we just wasted uh, – and then Justin Fields, he goes somewhere and does an amazing job. So I don't know. It's tough. I think that Harrison, we need a wide receiver. I would take him in, from Ohio State. But is he, do you trade down one pick and take him as a number two? Um, uh, yeah, I, I think these are tough decisions. But, I mean, yeah, I'm, sure the, it's I'm, tough. Sure the Bears will, I'm sure the Bears will figure out a way to – Mess Congratulations. You've thought about this pick on a deeper level than the Bears, the Bears management <laughs> at this point. Yeah, you, you you mentioned that that field when he's under pressure, he makes a lot of bad decisions. It sounds like he's cut off for politics. So maybe he could, <laughs> he could he could hit that in the next next phase of his career. He's too young. He's too young. Yeah, well, certainly for president, he's 70 years too young for to be to be a serious presidential candidate. Yeah, I like Fields. And and I was talking about this on, on Twitter before you hopped on here today. Uh you know, and I try to control for my Packer fandom whenever I do this. Of course, as a Packer fan, I I, I am a huge fan of, of Justin Fields. Hope he gets a ten year extension. But <laughs> all all jokes aside, or not jokes really in that case, Marvin Harrison Jr. is as close you're going to come to a sure thing superstar as you're going to ever get in the draft. Whereas Caleb Williams, who may be a superstar, he he's a tremendously talented player. You, you remember that the drama of Wisconsin yeah. getting a sniff of him in the transfer portal? How exciting that was. So this is no diss on Caleb Williams, but there's probably sixty to seventy percent of hot, you know, top ten NFL draft pick quarterbacks end up kind of sucking in the NFL. Yeah. I'm telling you, Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be a multi-year Pro Bowl All-Pro player if he stays healthy. Caleb Williams 
may or may not be a bust. That yeah. that is a very tough decision for Chicago to to make. Even as a Packer fan, I want them to make the wrong one. But if I'm <laughs> if I'm drafting, even with my fan base allegiance aside, I, I take Caleb. I, I pardon me. I take Marvin Harrison Jr. with with, with that Carolina Panthers pick. I, I just yeah, I, superstar. I think, I think so too. He, the guy is amazing. But again, they'll probably make the wrong decision. So <laughs> yeah. This could just be psyops that I'm trying to play under the, uh, the Chicago management. I know they're big fans of my show, so who knows what I really want? Uh, yeah. I, I wouldn't mind them bringing bringing Jimmy McMahon back to be the quarterback. Frankly, I mean he's uh, great, man. I mean he's yeah. he was partially blind. I mean partially blind, and he took the team to a Super Bowl. And the guy was an animal out there. He would take big hits, and you know the way football was in the '80s. I mean they didn't they didn't care if you led with your helmet. They barely called. Uh, roughing the passer, but you know, people like him were just built differently. Amazing yeah, lot. yeah. The 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 eighties and the headhunting ways of the the former NFL are the favorite things for the the fifty year old dudes who've never played meaningful football beyond JV third string tight end to say they want that back. These guys yeah. who've never had a concussion, other than banging their head on the back of their on the bottom of their their truck when they're changing the oil. But anyway, yeah, McMahon's actually the, the the most vicious hit of his career was delivered by Charles Martin of the Green Bay Packers. Uh, yeah. Some say that was a little, some say it was a little late. I'm not totally yeah. sure. Oh my god, that was the dirtiest hit of all time. I, was, uh, I actually was just talking about that like last week with some of my friends. Like this is this was football in the '80s. Was, that was insane. He had and he had like a hit list. Remember that he had like a hit list on his towel of, of quarterbacks he wanted to injure. That's crazy. I always believe that was that was a uh, a list of quarterbacks he wished to give hugs to and congratulate for their stellar play. Different perspective from Chicago, apparently. Um, but you know, we, we look, and that must have been seeing seeing Harbaugh or not Harbaugh. Don't get me started. Seeing seeing Jimmy McMahon go down like that, that must have been a a, a terrible shock for you as a second grader. And I'm not sure how you dealt with that. It was tough. I remember that day vividly. <laughs> they gave you a blanket and, and, and gave you some cookies. I think you're gonna be you're gonna be all right. Um, how's how's Luke Fickle's approval rating doing here in early February of 2024? You know, I think the jury's still out. I mean, I saw a lot of the Wisconsin fan base were already ready to you know throw up the wolves towards the end of last season. I mean, we should have won that bowl game. I mean, that was very very frustrating. I know the bowl game means absolutely nothing, but it's still nice to see your team win on New Year's Day, but they did play really well that game. Thank God we beat Minnesota. Like, I could not handle another loss to Minnesota. So, um, you know, but I, I just feel like I think he is a good coach. You know, I'm not – I'm trying to figure out Longo. Do I like Longo or do I not like Longo? And I think my jury – the jury is still out on Longo, I think. Um, I mean, how do you feel about Longo, coach? Longo, here, here's the thing about, about Phil. I think the jury is still out. I will say this. He's certainly been a boon to recruiting, and we are going to know after the 2024 season whether this is going to be a Phil Longo offense or not. That's going to be – this is it. He's going to – He's. there will not be two consecutive years where the offense doesn't function like it's supposed to. And I'm not saying that this offense can't end up more talented through recruiting in, in 2025 and 2026. It can be. But I do think it's fair getting two handpicked transfer portal quarterbacks consecutively in two years because, let's be honest, this is Longo's guy again. Uh, yeah. you know, and and all that. I I think this is a a referendum. I'm you know I'm gonna I'm gonna choose to be optimistic. I think he is a he's a good coach, but yeah, he has a lot to prove at Wisconsin. If if his entire resume was the first half of the the former Outback Bowl uh, against LSU, he's an easy he's a five year contract extension. But if his if it's the second half, maybe you're wondering what's going on with the guy. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm going to be optimistic. I think he's a smart guy, and he certainly connects with his players. So, well, let's let's see what happens. Um, yeah. I got a, a couple hypotheticals I wanted to get to you before we let you off here. Um, yeah. PJ Fleck, Fran McCaffrey, and Ryan Day. You can only save two of these coaches from a desert <laughs> island. Why do you leave PJ Fleck behind? <laughs> I'd love to say like that one is might have been an easy choice. He's not a very likable guy, huh? I mean, uh, and. Uh, how long does he stay at Minnesota? It just doesn't feel like he's, you know, I don't know. Do Minnesota fans like him? I mean, he I don't know. I think they have to deal with it. He, he's like a like a disease you manage, but he's. I feel like if if you ask PJ Fleck back same question, he, he you know is he the right guy for Minnesota? He he would definitely say yes. 
And I know I, I lampoon him a little bit on my account, but the guy just gives so much ammunition. It's almost like I feel guilty if I don't do some stuff. And I think he kind of secretly likes it. I think he has a burner of like, you know, Ben Badger 69694374 that occasionally even likes my PJ Flex stuff because it's just, it's keeping his name in the, in the news. PJ may go hang a banner for me mentioning him on this podcast. But, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. I, Again, he's three games under 500 after seven years as a Big Ten West coach at Minnesota. I'm okay with him staying there. I really, I really yeah. am. Uh, yeah. Two and four against Wisconsin, and that's the two highlights of Minnesota's last seven years, with the exception of beating Auburn in the Outback Bowl. I, I think I can live with this guy. Right, right. I mean, I he just gives him cause uh, the you know that unlikable image, you know, and me. I guess maybe he likes it. Maybe he likes being a villain. You know, good stuff. We're going to do a word association game. These are more fun. I know if you're a, a huge fan, I know you and the entire CNN news staff, editorial staff are gigantic Scary Alvarez podcast fans. Um, <laughs> there could be a, a major debate on a, on a major bill, perhaps for funding the border or something. You, you immediately turn that off and go right to the podcast. And I do, and I will not forget that. Um, I'm going to say a, a name or, or words, and I want you to say the very first things that come out of your mind that won't get you fired. Um, <laughs> Oh boy. Uh well let's let's stick with it. PJ Flag. Uh not nice. <laughs> okay, you have to do a little better than that, Mark. Let's 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 spice this up. This is a PG thirteen show, man. Flag? Yeah. <laughs> PJ Flag. Uh doesn't have the axe anymore. Gotcha. Yeah, he's probably a newsmax guy anyway. We don't have to worry about whether he watches you. It's gonna be fine. Um Greg Gard. Um, man, I'm torn over. Greg. I like Greg Gard, so I'm. Uh, I think he. I've had a my time issues with him over the years, um, and questions about his recruiting. I do think the players really like him. I think he's built a system that works. So I feel generally positive about Greg Gard. So, um, yeah, that's not one word. <laughs> That was that was diplomatic enough. That was diplomatic enough for you to get an ambassador spot. Okay, good work, good work, Monty. I mean, um, yeah, I, I I think he's you know he's 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 a good coach, and I think he's doing the recruiting has been much better, which has been my initial my concern for many years about his recruiting. But AJ Store, I mean, he's pretty darn good. Yeah, this this free take kid they have coming in from from Minneapolis next year. I'm telling you, that's he is going to be an all time Badger. And I don't, I don't get too much into recruiting, but he's he's going to get playing time immediately, and that's going to be a really, basically the whole team is coming back except for Tyler Wall. So if you don't like this team, tough luck. If you do yeah. like this team, I think that I think this is a legitimate Sweet Sixteen caliber team. Well, yeah, I mean too, I totally agree, and I mean hopefully more than that. Hopefully we can get to the Final Four. I mean, I I'm worried, I'm worried AJ Store is going to leave us though after this year. Um, I I feel like he could I, – I like Storr, so I don't want this to be misinterpreted. I think Storr is a super talented, exciting player who's a good teammate. He he probably wants to keep the, the, the Purdue highlights off as real, is, is what I would say yeah, from yesterday. That wasn't, wasn't, that wasn't his best. Work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when he, he sometimes heaves up those prayers. and I'm like, why are you shooting that? But yeah. he's an unbelievably talented guy. So we'll I, I totally agree, and he was he – was, Maybe the biggest addition to this team that takes it from what it was last year to this year. I think some of it is obviously the players improving and maturing and getting better and playing better offense. I won't say better defense, but better offense. But so Storr's a good one. I certainly hope he sticks around in Madison next year. Uh, okay, a couple more here. Uh, Wisconsin volleyball. First thing that comes to your mind. National champs. You know, maybe not maybe not this past year, but they they're for real. They're awesome. Yeah, they're good stuff. Uh, Michigan football. Uh, cheaters. <laughs> I was going to, I was ready to correct you and tell you the correct answer was cheaters. And this is amazing. It's almost like you wrote my coffee here. This is good stuff. You can, Molly was in Molly was in my in my ear here. We got we got a perfect one for you. And finally, uh, Wisconsin men's and women's hockey games are so much fun, and the women's hockey team is the absolute best. They are the pre cream of the crop. So I I used to go to games all the time as a student so i wish i could go back it's good stuff and the men's team under new coach hastings has has been incredible they're a top five team right now second in the big 10 to michigan state michigan state they have two games in hand so th this is a potential big 10 champion 
potential national champion team that won six games last season. I, and I love Tony Granato. That 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 mm-hmm. him not working out was one of the biggest surprises. I wish him well with his, with his cancer diagnosis. Seems like he's doing well. He's back to work again in Chicago uh, and doing broadcasts. Tony Tony is just such a great human being, mm-hmm. and there's no one more surprised that he didn't take the program to the next level uh, that, than I am because uh, it just didn't work out. But but Hastings was a was a wonderful hire. And uh, I'm super excited about the program. Yep, yep, absolutely. That's great to hear. I'm glad you heard that. Hey, it, needs be, it needs to be on. It needs to be on TV more. You know, I mean, hardly any hockey games are on TV. That's that's very true. That's very true. You get these broadcasts that are like in like 240 DPI. You see, like they have this. They have some 19 year old calling, which is fine. I mean, young broadcasters are are wonderful. But it's just it's like this Minnesota series should have been could have been you know prime time ESPN. It was it was relegated to some secondary station, but that's fine. Okay, uh, we're, on, we're on final approach on my on my jet here. Um, who who is the best Wisconsin tight end in school history? Uh, from Jake Ferguson, of course. Thank you. You have passed. <laughs> so if there ever were, if there were a referendum on you getting back on this podcast, you've done it. It's been so fun watching Jake. Uh, just even even taking the bloodlines out of it, and obviously uh, the, all the athletic talent he got from Grandpa. Just watching him, except for those three touchdowns he had against the Packers, which were a little bit divisive for, for me. Uh, what a what a tremendous talent, and he's truly one of the best young tight ends in the NFL right now. What a, it's, yeah. it's been cool to see. He's a, he's a great, he's, he's a great, he's absolutely great. Hey, before we leave, can I leave you with a, a story that you may you will remember, Coach? I just want to absolutely your memory. So uh, remember the day Ron Dane broke the all time. Rushing record, of course. You remember playing Iowa? Oh yeah. Um, there was a there was a naked guy who streaked hundred yards down the field with thirty three on his uh, on his chest, all over his body, face paint and all. Did the Heisman pose multiple times along the field? Um, it was not me, just for the record. No, no, I, I figured that was. We, we vetted <laughs> was, you. We vetted you. <laughs> yes, but. Uh, this was my uh, good friend who I went to the game with, Tim Condon. So he he was standing with us the whole game. He was wearing his trench coat, planned to do it the entire way, ran across the field, uh, got arrested, of course, got ticket, lots of yes. tickets. And then no, no one knew who he was because, of course, this was before anyone had any phones or anything like this. They didn't even show it on TV. Uh, but I did. And I wrote for the Badger Herald at the time. So I broke the story, my first scoop of my career. <laughs> was identifying the name of the streaker and interviewing the streaker. And Tim Condon, my buddy, um, he became a campus legend after that. They had people to do parties for him. You know, Ron Dane, he hung out with Ron Dane and his buddies one day. We raised a ton of money. He actually probably ended up making money on the whole ordeal. And on top of this, go to Camp Randall, on the plaque, top 100 moments. Not just Ron Dane breaking the record, Coach. You'll, you'll know this. Nearby your statue. It's a, one of the one of the top 100 moments. The Dane game streaker Tim Condon on the wall of, of Camp Randall. It's unbelievable, and I know that that your friend wanted to to add an additional line to that plaque that said, "By the way, it was really cold that day." But we didn't. He didn't. He didn't get the chance to do that. But we all understand. Us, us guys who've been swimming, we understand that Costanza understands. But but what a legend! And I would love to. Hey, maybe we get him on the show, and he can we can go over it because one of the things I like doing the show is is kind of re-examine some of the, the awesome moments in, in Badger history. And uh, that, that certainly was one of them. And I know maybe, maybe I'll get him and Dan on. They can, they can, they can tell their stories for that day. I would, I would, I would listen to that episode. Absolutely. Fantastic. Well, we're going to let you off here with one final question. I could have yeah. gone for three hours, obviously. And I have all the time in the world. Even though I'm approaching middle age, I have all the time in the world. Um, <laughs> put these three things in rank order, Manu. Mm-hmm. Having your dream job of covering Congress for a major cable network the birth of your two children <laughs> doing this podcast right now. Go. <laughs> well, I mean, I would honestly, you know, that's tough, but I would probably have to say, you know, podcast is, this is probably uh, trumps everything that I've done in my life. So thank you for this honor. Carl. Absolutely. I hear you mention my name there. Um, <laughs> that's, that's good stuff. And, and I, I don't want to make it uncomfortable for you to go, Two and three there between your kid's birth and your current job with your with your <laughs> producer or your one of your one of your handlers on the on the line here. But uh, please do so. <laughs> yeah. Well, we'll rank the two of them. I'll choose children over anything, you know. So 
I'll be diplomatic. I'll be, I'll, I'll be, the, I'll give the right answer to that. Well, hey, her MSNBC is hiring, so <laughs> don't, don't worry about it. Well, great. Well, well, this was, this was, Molly, this was certainly the honor of a lifetime uh, for you. And uh, I enjoyed, I enjoyed it as well. Thank you so much for spending time with us. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll have you on again in the future and, and, and good luck. Not, not probably not a whole lot going on in politics in 2024, but hopefully you can find something to do there, uh, some 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 news to cover, and we'll uh, have you back on in the future. Thanks a lot, Coach. Anytime, happy to do it. On Wisconsin. On Wisconsin.